Okay, folks, I think everybody has checked in that was out in the hallway. Is that Cheryl? Two more? Okay. There's only two more folks that are going to check in. So, uh, again, if you're a non-resident, if you're a non-voter, you need to be in the first four rows on this side. And what we're going to do before we start is just have everybody hold up their vote paper, and then the counters are going to go around and look for anybody that doesn't have a vote paper. And if you don't have a vote paper, you're going to get ejected to the front four rows over here. <laughs> Our counters are very stern and unforgiving constables. They will find you if you're out there. Okay. All right, we've heard this side of the room is good. We're still waiting on the left side. Looks like they're pretty good. We're down to the wire back there. Okay, we got the all clear from both sides. Hmm. Okay, the appointed hour having arrived and the quorum being present, I'll now call the special town meeting to order. I'll ask the town clerk to come forward to read the warning and the return. constables in the town of Freetown greeting in the name of the Commonwealth you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of Freetown who are qualified to vote in town affairs to meet in the Freetown Elementary School Auditorium 43 Bullock Road East Freetown Mass 02717 on Saturday February 15 2020 at 1 p.m. then and there to act on the following articles and you are hereby directed to serve this warrant by posted att posting attested copies thereof at the following places. The Sonnet Post Office, East Freetown Post Office, the stores of Quick Pick and East Freetown and Junior's Convenience Store in the Sonnet, the Freetown Town Hall, and the Freetown Communications Center. Hereof fail not and make return of the original warrant with your doings thereon immediately after making service thereof to the town clerk of the town of Freetown, Massachusetts, given under our hands and seal of the town of Freetown, 21st day of January, Anno Domini, 2020, signed by the Freetown Board of Selectmen. To the town clerk, town of Freetown, Massachusetts, January 28, 2020, I have this day posted attested copies of this warrant in the designated places described herein. Signed, Carlton E. Abbott, Jr. Constable. Okay. Uh, just a couple of reminders of typical things before we start. If you have a cell phone, please make sure that it's on silent so that it doesn't go off during the meeting. Um, if you do wish to participate in the discussion at any point today, you need to come to the microphone. The first time that you come to the microphone, you want to give your name and your residence. It doesn't have to be your exact address. You can just say a son of the East Freetown. Um, particularly, we do have some visitors from out of town today. When you come up to the microphone to speak, you want to make sure you have your vote paper in your hand. That's how we make sure that you are a voter or a resident. Um, and nobody should speak until they're recognized by the moderator. Now, like I said, we do have some visitors from out of town because there are folks from Lakeville who are interested in this. And we welcome you to be here. Um, there are some non-voters in this very front row who are part of the petitioning group for Article 2. They will be allowed to come up to help answer questions. 
or to give information in response to questions that people may have. But on the whole, this is strictly a Freetown town meeting, so it will only be Freetown residents that are participating in the discussion. Lakeville residents are welcome to stay, to learn, to absorb. Eventually, you guys will have your own town meeting on this, and this is where you'll be able to, to have your debate. Um, so other than that, we'll get started with Article 1. Article 1, to see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $9,500 from the assessor's personal service budget, line 0011141510901530. To the assessor's expense budget, line 0011141530909340000, and or take any action relative thereto. This was submitted by the Board of Assessors. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee recommends this article. Motion, motion has been made and seconded to adopt Article 1 as read. Is there any discussion or questions on Article 1? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Article 1 is adopted unanimously. Article 2. Me. To see if the town will vote to, uh, excuse me, to see if the town will put forth legislation to establish the Freetown Lakeville Lake District in the towns of Lakeville and Freetown. The district's purpose is to use sustainable and appropriate environmental practices to encourage biodiversity in the plant and animal communities that use the lakes in the district while controlling nuisance or damaging species in Long Pond. Take appropriate action to protect and maintain the integrity of the water quality of the pond so as to protect public and private water supplies or take other action relative thereto. We understand that in carrying out the purpose of the district, an assessment fee shall be collected from town residents abutting and or having deeded access to Long Pond on an annual basis. Without the Lake District, Long Pond and associated facilities will experience problems of declining resource use and deficiencies of environmental control that threaten the ecological, economical, public safety and health, and recreational values of these bodies of water within the district and subsequently the Assawamsit and Namaskit River watershed area. This article was submitted by petition. It requires a majority vote. The Finance Committee does not recommend this article. Okay, the selectmen have asked that you know that they also do not rec uh, recommend this article. Uh, I do need a motion one way or another. Make a motion. Put it down. Okay, that's, I have a motion to defeat. Second. I have a motion and a second to defeat. Um, at this time, the petitioners are going to give their presentation, and then we will move on to general discussion after that. No, but they're going to give their presentation first, then we're going to have the discussion. I'm sorry? I have a question concerning the balance. Oh, okay. Yep. That you can ask. That's a point of order question. You can ask that. Point of order. Chuck Kamara, East Freetown. You just had a head count for those voting members. Yes. Can you put that on record and let us know here how many are here? 110, 514, 26, whatever the number could be. Please. They didn't count the people. Didn't they count the balance? They just just looked to make sure. <coughs> they just looked to make sure that it was residents sitting in the right area. So, if you want to take account of how many people are here, we can do a recess to do that. I was understanding it was going to be a count of heads holding up your ballot, and that's it. That's what I understood. Maybe I was wrong. When we go to the actual vote, it will be. That was just to make sure voters and non-voters were seated in the right location. Thank you. Sure. And just so everybody knows, in case that question comes up, our quorum for this meeting is 10. So, we have more than met the quorum of 10. Um, are there any other point of order questions before we go on to the presentation? Okay, then at this time, uh, the folks from the Lake District will give their presentation. that Tim would come over here and give the presentation for me because he's a much better speaker than I am. I'm sorry, Mike. I meant Mike. Okay, so before I begin, I'd like to ask everyone to please hold all questions and comments until after the presentation. Okay, my name is Jay Sarsha. I'm a Freetown resident. 
Uh, before I begin, I'd like to ask everyone to please hold all their questions and comments until after the presentation and the moderator opens the floor. <coughs> I'm accompanied today by the Freetown Lakeville Lake District Committee, which is made up of volunteers that own and live in neighborhoods on and around Long Pond. Also with us today is our environmental attorney, Karen Benson, and Joe Honorado from Solitude Lake Management. Solitude is the leading management company, leading lake management company, not only in Massachusetts, but along the eastern seacoast. So let's begin. So why are we here today? We're here because we want to help save Massachusetts' best kept secret. We're here because we want our grandchildren to be able to swim in a clean, weed-free pond. And if I could interject there, I want everybody to understand that our intention is not to change anything about Long Pond. We want to keep Long Pond exactly how it is. We have zero intentions of taking over a boat ramp all we want is clean, weed-free water. We're here because we're tired of hearing people say, I'm not swimming in that gross brown water, which I know plenty of your wives have said. <laughs> we're here because we're concerned about nature and being good stewards of our environment. <clears throat> We're here because we want to protect property values. We're here because we want to preserve the ability to enjoy sunset cruises for years to come. We're here because we hope I'm sorry, I'm not one that gets choked up very often, but... Let me, let me just take a minute. Um, let me say thank you to everybody for being here. Let me say that this isn't about me. This is not about my backyard. It's not about the members of our committee's backyard. It's not about your backyard or your backyard or your backyard. This is about this is about a four mile long by one mile wide ecosystem. This is about the home to thousands of species of life. It's about their home. We go to Dunkin' Donuts every day and buy a $3 cup of coffee. And that $3 cup of coffee, that's $90 a month in coffee. That's over $1,000 a year in coffee. And yet we debate about spending 200 or in most cases $100 a year to help save an entire ecosystem. <coughs> I'm sorry. So we're here because we hope you love Long Pond as much as we do. So here's what we're up against, folks. This is this is what the invasive weed species looks like. And there I am on a 12 foot ladder on my pontoon boat. I wouldn't suggest you do that. It was fine right up until Nick's friend Seth drove by on his boat and <laughs> on top of a 12 foot ladder. But don't worry, I survived. What's interesting about this slide is 
that 15 to 20 years ago, when people started recognizing that there was an invasive weed in Long Pond, people said, don't worry about it. It only grows in shallow waters. It'll only grow in the cove areas where it's shallow. And that's correct. These invasive weeds, they only grow in the shallow areas, up to 10 feet. Well, Long Pond, on average, is eight feet deep. And if you look at this video, this video was not shot in a cove in Long Pond, which means eventually the entire lake will be consumed by this invasive species. We're here because there's a risk of because we realize that there's a risk of becoming entangled in weed-infested waters. Years ago, a young man was swimming in Woods Pond in Middleburg. He was an accomplished swimmer. He swam for his college swim team. He swam into a weeded area. He became entangled in these weeds, and he drowned. If you Google drowning by invasive weeds, you'll see pages and pages of men, women, and children that have drowned due to swimming in weed-infested waters. It's only a matter of time before someone's child dies in Long Pond. This is Cliff Carden. He's a recently retired Freetown firefighter. Oops. You know, back in the day, we could swim out to this yeah. over here and with no problem, with no weeds, and now we can't go any further. Sorry about that. The edge of our... Let me try that again. You know, back in the day. What if I turn the microphone on? Testing. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> you know, back in the day, we could swim out to this buoy here and with no problem, with no weeds, and now we can't go any further than probably to the edge of our dock now when we start encountering weeds. And now you, uh, you get uh, involved in some entanglement issues. I can tell you a few years back, I did jump off the back of my boat, not knowing how thick the weeds were, and almost didn't come up. And that's, that's no joke. It's scary. So Cliff said he jumped off the back of his boat, and he almost didn't come up. And that's no joke. It's scary. So we're here as a community to do something about the pond's biggest problem, invasive weeds. We've put over 2,000 hours of research, fundraising, and speaking with federal, state, and local authorities to get us to this point. I have had at length communication and meetings with the Department of Conservation and Recreation, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, the Massachusetts Department of Fishing and Boating, Solitude Lake Management, the Taunton Waterworks, the New Bedford Department of Infra Infrastructure, and have made presentations to the towns for the last several years. Also, the United States uh, Fisheries and Wildlife. This is a page uh, uh, from the website of the United States Environmental Protection Agency. I've highlighted, we must realize preventing the spread of invasive species will require hard work. State, local, and federal governments must play a leading role in identifying and preventing the spread of invasive species. However, this problem is too large for governments to tackle alone. To face this challenge, and following EPA recommendations, 
We need to quickly and dramatically increase the number of watershed groups, lake associations, and districts. So folks, the federal government and the EPA recommend that we start a lake district. So the state of Massachusetts, recognizing there was a problem, sorry, I'm going to switch over to this. Can you hear me all right with this? So the state of Massachusetts, recognizing there was a problem, decided they must get proactive and help rid the over 3,000 lakes and ponds of these invasive plants that are killing our waterways. So they spent millions of dollars on a study. The Department of Conservation and Recreation spent millions of dollars on a study. And this study, mm -hmm, sorry, This study, I'm not going to use that microphone. This study identifies Long Pond as being infested with fanwort and milfoil. This study is available for anybody if you'd like to come grab it and you can take a look at it. So, along with this study, the state created the Invasive Management Plan, as well as the Invasive Plant Task Force, and also created the Lakes and Ponds Grant Program that would fund the eradication of invasive aquatic weeds. So this is what happens when you click on the link to the Invasive <coughs> Management Plan Oops, we can't find that page. The management plan, the invasive task force, the lakes and ponds grant program, they're all defunct. All of these programs died, but the weed, the weeds haven't died. They're still there. Fast forward a few years, and enter the flood of March of 2010. We all remember the flood of March of 2010. The floods were severe and greatly blamed on the invasive weeds choking the Ramasket River. As a result, state reps Aral and Casera were instrumental in creating the environmental bond bill. The Environmental Bond Bill tackles South Coast water worries. The Envi Environmental Bill signed by Governor Deval Patrick addresses a number of water-related concerns on the South Coast from flooding to invasive weeds. This bond bill included $13 million for the removal of invasive plants in area water bodies. It also included $4.75 million for flood management of the Asawamsit Pond Complex. Representative Aral said she is thrilled that the money has been allocated for the Asawamsit Pond Complex, a drinking water source for Taunton and New Bedford. Now I must commend them for the hard work that they did to create this bill. Unfortunately, well, the bill went to the committee and you guessed it, it died. We never saw a penny of that $13 million for weed eradication. So again, that bill died, but the weed continues to live. So, this study that the state spent millions of dollars on said, on page 21, the DCR encourages the, stab, the establishment of lake and pond committees to coordinate community-wide oversight on all lakes and pond efforts. 
Cities and towns should encourage lake groups to form associations and promote the formation of official lake and pond committees to oversee their activities. This study that the state spent millions of dollars on says we should start a lake district. The EPA and the federal government say we should start a lake district. What is a lake district? Well, our lake district charter is to preserve, protect, and resurrect Long Pond. To bring proprietors together as a community organization to address the challenges facing Long Pond. To address the invasive weed issues by all means necessary. To keep Long Pond open and available for all to enjoy. To enact best practices to maintain Long Pond for years to come. To support the town of Freetown with staffing and training of boat ramp monitors. To educate Long Pond residents and visitors on issues facing the pond and how they can help preserve and protect it for the future. How does the district work? Properties that are waterfront have deeded access, abut a waterway that feeds Long Pond, or are in a neighborhood that has a benefit to Long Pond will be a part of the district. These property owners are called proprietors. Freetown and Lakeville Selectmen will notify all proprietors by certified mail the time, date, and location of the initial district meeting. The proprietors control the district by electing a committee and voting on the budget and the direction of the district at an annual meeting. The, the committee will consist of a district moderator, a clerk, a treasurer, and the, and the district prudential committee consisting of seven proprietors and two altern alternates, including a chairperson and vice chairperson. In short, the district operates the same as a local town government and is also subject to audit by the state oversight committee. The Lake District's plan would be to engage Solitude Lake Management to perform a survey of the pond and provide a proposal to address the weed issues and water quality. Solitude will perform weed eradication through methods like diver-assisted suction dredging, eco-harvesting, which is like a big lawnmower on a pontoon boat that pulls the weeds up from their roots, deposits them onto a boat, the weeds are brought to the edge of the lake and taken to the local landfill. They also use spot treatment with Massachusetts and EPA approved herbicides that are currently being used in drinking supplies. Our first year's estimate of uh, treatment is approximately $150,000. Solitude and the district would work together for ongoing maintenance of Long Pond and the district would provide the town of Freetown with the resources to staff and monitor the boat ramp and perform boat inspections. This is an example of some of the properties that would be included in the district. There are an estimated 1,500 homes in the district. So we expect to collect approximately $250,000 annually for the district's operating budget. Before I go on, I know that our attorney is going to address you and help you understand that there is federal funding available. Now, for years, I've been contacting the EPA and other, uh, other agencies to find out how can we get rid of the weed who, who's going to pay for this and they said well there is federal funding available but they won't give it to me I don't know why they wouldn't just give it to me but they won't give it to me but they will give it to a district now if you look at sample number two sample number two is a home in Heaven Heights it's a, it's a three bedroom, two bathroom cape on 15,000 square feet with two car garage. It's assessed at $259,700.
Our estimate is that their fee would be approximately $100 per year. Sample number three is a waterfront property whose assessment is $439,000. Their annual fee would be approximately $180. Now please keep in mind, that is without any federal funding. That's if we're only funding ourselves. It's also important to point out that the legislation that was passed out to you today does include and mandate a procedure for filing an exclusion due to financial hardship. Also, the district will review budget needs annually with a goal of reducing proprietor fees as costs to maintain and protect the pond decrease. So what's the risk of doing nothing? Well, we know human life is at stake the ecosystem will continue to suffer. Home values decline as long pond water quality continues to diminish. The ripple effect will impact neighboring home values, costing the towns and homeowners millions of dollars. We all want something to happen. And we believe this is the only effective direction we can take. We need to take action now. This is a letter from Senator Rodericks. It says, for years, Long Pond has been consumed by an invasive aquatic plant life and by other invasive species that threaten the water quality. The habitats of river herring, alewives, and blueback herring are also at risk of being destroyed. Creating a lake district could help protect this vital natural resource and prevent our water supply from diminishing. Additionally, maintain water, waterfront property values, maintain water quality, and support recreational fishing and boating. I understand Mr. Sarsher will be presenting his case to the Board of Selectmen on April 24, 2018, regarding the need for a lake district. I respectfully request that you give full consideration to this proposal. So ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, the federal government, the EPA, recommends lake districts. The state has spent millions of dollars on studies that conclude with a recommendation of a lake district to fund and oversee lake and pond issues. Senator Rodericks recommends we create a lake district. So let's do the right thing and put forth this legislation so we as a community can start to resurrect, protect, and enjoy Long Pond forever. Thank you. Do we, do we ever get a count of how many people were here? 182, 182 voters are registered for the meeting today. Uh, we'll now move on to general discussion and questions. So it's a regular town meeting. If you have a question, if you have a comment you'd like to make, come up to the microphone. Uh, don't be afraid to form a line. That's the best way to know that there are more people waiting to go. Remember to give your name and what part of town you live in, and uh, we'll go from here. Sir. Mr. Rodri, John Baptiste of East Freetown. When uh, the legislation was put forth, or what I read, was that anyone who derives a benefit from the pond is my understanding. Now the direct benefit they so speak of was the public water supplies. Now, with the public water supplies, and we're looking at it, we could put a small tax per hundred, like say a penny, for all the water that's pumped out of New Bedford, and they can do the same for Taunton. 
and therefore we would derive revenue from a direct benefit to the pond, a direct benefit. And that should be included in there with a tax directly, we wouldn't call it a tax, we'd call it a fee for the maintenance of their water supply. It's not our water supply, it's their water supply. You're putting the benefit for this on the taxpayers, residents, and members of the town of Freetown. Furthermore, at the boat ramp, we could also charge a water preservation fee, say $100 a launch, plus a $50 launch fee that goes directly back to the town so that the people there could be paid by the town and the town could control this money. If you impose those fees, there would be no need for the water district to maintain and coerce the people of the town to get the town cleaned up. Second of all, when I grew up as a child in this town, Mr. Amo Fisher went around and warned of the dangers of putting in a boat ramp to the state. They all thought he was crazy. He actually exposed the same problem that we have here many years ago before that boat ramp was in. And it was the state who rammed it down our throats. And it's the state problem that should be taxed or absolutely, absolutely tapped for the money that is also needed to clean up the town properties. Second, a while back, we have the town beach. Now, we all pay a fee to use the town beach within this property. The town beach is open to anyone and everyone who comes in. Now, if you go to Mattapoisett, you go to New Bedford, you go to Marion, you go to any other town beach, if you're a non-resident, you're charged a super fee to use their beaches. And I propose that we station someone at the, oh, and I also state that we should lock and put a gate in immediately at the town boat ramp. I've seen people there late at night with their boats. That should be closed off at the end of the day, period. The other thing is, when those people walk in, and I used to take my children to the beach. I used to be a nurse in a prison system. I got moved there, kind of against my will. So I had to be locked up with these people. I got to read the tattoos. I got to know the tattoos. We had MS-13. We, we had the Latin Kings. And they're all there. They're all using our facility. Because there would be problems down in New Bedford, wherever they were hanging out. I don't think we should be subjected to that, and we should have a small fee for them, like $5 a walk on. If we as a town resident, we could attach our children or other residents on our permit so that we could look it up, see if they're there, they can come in if they wanted to walk onto the beach. Second of all, uh, third of all, fourth of all, right? <laughs> The remission of the weeds could be town by town without charging people. I think that we should limit the scope, cap the fees if, we, if they so desire to put it, so that the fees could never go above. Because everything I know about a tax or a district or any other fees, they always go up. I don't think these fees are going to go down. I think this water district will be ever expanded. Because in essence, don't we all benefit from the properties? I'm giving that to him. So then that could incorporate the whole town. But the direct benefit mostly is the city of New Bedford. And the city of New Bedford could and should be placed with a fee for us to protect their water. And that's about it all I have to say. And also, this meeting, I, my friend who is down in Florida, and there are many other people who have direct access to the pond are not here. They're in Florida, and they have essentially no say, and their residents also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Johan, I have uh, two questions. Uh, one, when they gave the cost per house estimate based on the budget, did that budget include the salaries of the uh, board members? Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give this portable microphone to the folks from the Lake District so they can respond to some of these questions. Because it said they will be able to give themselves salaries. Should I respond to the first? Oh, still it's only the one question so far. 
Okay, so um, you can pass it Basically. out to everybody. Where, uh, where do you want to begin? Number Just one? with the question I asked. Will, will, was that taken into account? salaries was their salary included in that yes budget? and what would that salary be well that would be determined by um, so if you haven't determined it, how could you have had that added into the budget well hold on a second I'll get the budget out and I'll tell you what the estimated amount was of salaries yes sir Okay, you move on. I have another question about Section 21. It says the committee at a meeting called thereof may annex adjacent territories and its inhabitants if, in the judgment of the committee, the property has legal access to the lakes in the district and the majority of the committees vote to expand the limits of the district. Every Freetown resident has access to the lake by virtue of the boat ramp and the town beach. If I'm reading that correctly, that says you could expand it to tax every single resident of Freetown and Lakeville? No, that's not the intention. That, that's, I don't know if it's the intention, but it's the clear legal reading of the section. No, it'd be... Um, Would you be willing to strike that? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Attorney Karen Betts, and I represent the uh, proponents. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Talking to you. Yeah. Put the mic closest yeah. to your mouth. Yeah. How about this? Is that any better? Yeah. Closer. Yeah. My name is Karen Benson. I represent the proponents tonight. Closer. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, um, my name is Karen Benson. I've been practicing law more than 20 years in Fall River. I have a, a, a love of environmental law. I'm past president of Save the Bay in Rhode Island, uh, former uh, counsel to the Taunton River Watershed Alliance. I'd like to think that I'm here to build a coalition, but of course I'm also here to answer your questions about the legislation. The first thing I want to say is it's proposed legislation. If you think we can do better to accommodate the needs of this municipality and your concerns, we want to do that, okay? We want to give you the details, and we, we have the freedom under the laws that <coughs> where these lake districts are drafted to modify the language so we welcome that input as far as section 21 can you pose your question again about it's my clear understanding of this that it says that you could at a later date by virtue of a vote of the majority of the committee annex anyone who has access to the pond into your tax scheme here, your ghost government. I don't think that's a correct reading of, of what it says. Let me tell you how we form. That, that's, that's your opinion? I, I, that's my clear understanding. I understand that's your legal opinion, but okay. in the Supreme Court cases, half the lawyers always lose. So not every opinion is valid. That's true. That's very true. So if you're proposing that that language could be modified. We're open to that, okay? It seems and, like a clear, a clear reading of it. But don't forget, this legislation is also going to be subject to bylaws. In other words, uh, uh, rules and regulations about how the votes will take place, who will serve on the committee, all of that. There'll be a system of checks and balances, okay? From the committee to the committee? By virtue of the legislation, <clears throat> if both towns agree, and the voters decided to put, move it forward, they would be subject to the checks and balances of our statewide legislation and the bylaws that would ultimately be adopted. So but, you would have said here that, that, that they could, would only have to have a majority of the board to 
enact whatever bylaws they want. With this current language and, and, and what I've tried to make clear. That's the language I'm worried about, the current. We're willing to modify the language if you feel that would help protect homeowners in the municipalities. It will strike that immediately. Well, let's hear from some other voters maybe and see. Sir, how about that? Okay, fine. Uh, hi, Nikki Castingay. I'm from East Freetown. I have a question about a figure that was um, kind of banged about. If the boat ramp were to charge a fee of $50 or $100, that would earn a lot of money for the district. I've worked at the boat ramp for four years, and I've never seen anybody there who would pay $50 or $100 to park. My question is, if you make the boat ramp parking prohibitive, in the end, the only boaters who will get to enjoy the pond are the people who live on it. Okay, so the way to address that is if you would go to MGL, Massachusetts General Law, Section 45, Chapter 131, the, the lake, Long Pond is owned by the state of Massachusetts. No one can shut down the boat ramp. No one can put a gate across the parking lot. No one is ever charged to enter Long Pond. If you go to the boat ramp and you put your boat in, you launch your boat, and then you drive away, you pay no fee. The only fee that is collected is a parking fee of $5. But you mentioned 50 or 100 I've never mentioned 50 or $100. That, that was one of the other speakers. I have had that mentioned. I'm sorry. By people who were proponents of the Lake District, a fee of $50 or $100. Hold, 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 hold on one second. Just hold it. Could you just repeat that into the microphone so everybody could hear it? It has been, it has been mentioned, mentioned to me by proponents of the Lake District that the fee for parking would be $50. It's now $5. There's nobody there who's going to pay $50. It will get rid of the fishermen, which I think might be one of the um, one of the motives, because when I watched the presentation given by somebody from the district in 2018 at the town meeting, it talked about 50 fishermen at a fishing tournament. I've worked there for four years. And the most trucks that have ever been in the parking lot when I got there at 8 o'clock, long after the fishermen left, was 16. One of them was a paddleboarder, and one of them was a canoe. Never seen 50 fishermen. 50 boats, but not 50 people in a fishing tournament. Yes, so one thing at a time. First is, uh, a few years ago, when we started this research, it's, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're, we're actually just doing what other lakes and ponds have done in Massachusetts, creating a lake district. So we've researched and, and we're uh, helped out by other lakes and ponds. And what some other lakes and ponds have done is to increase the entry fee into their lakes and ponds. However, they are not state owned. So when we first started this, we thought that we could actually help fund the weed eradication by increasing the entry fee into Long Pond. But we were, we were, uh, we were informed that because it's a state-owned body of water and the state owns the boat ramp, that no one can be charged any fee than what is more than it costs to pay the attendance. So, the state has told me that if we want to have boat ramp monitors at the boat ramp 14 hours a day from Labor Day to Memorial Day, Memorial Day to Labor Day, uh, then the selectmen can request to the state that we be allowed to increase the fee with only the amount that would cover to pay the boat ramp monitors. The town cannot make money on that boat ramp. 
The state can't make money on that boat ramp, and the district cannot make money on that boat ramp. At $5 a day, our salary is well paid for by the people who go there. That's correct. You, but, but if you charge a higher fee, you won't be getting the revenue to pay the people because voters won't come for $50 or $100 to park at Long Pond. Look at the cars in the it parking lot. It can never be $50. The well, that's what was charged. quoted to me. And who would regulate how high the fee could go? It would only be, the, the fee would only be to cover the cost of the boat ramp monitors. It will never be $50 according to the state of Massachusetts. You can call Tom Flannery from the Department of Boating and Fishing Access, and he will tell you the highest fee paid in Massachusetts is ten dollars for a that, state boat ramp. That's for correct. A boat ramp. For a state okay. boat ramp, which we have a state boat ramp. And when someone spoke to me about it, ten dollars was not the figure that was introduced. You to are me. correct. It we, was we, we used an example a few years ago when we made a presentation to the selection in Freetown. Uh, we used an example uh, using Webster Lake as an example. However, their boat ramp. Uh, that they charge, I think it's forty dollars, is not a state boat ramp. It's a private boat ramp, so they can do anything they want to do. I'm not um, adverse to protecting the pond from invasive species. I'm adverse to spoiling the nature of Long Pond, which has been for anybody and everybody to use for a very low fee. And as and I made it very clear during the presentation that our intention is to not change a thing. No. We want Long Pond to remain exactly as it is, open and available to the public. My name is William Sylvia from Heaven Heights. I'm probably putting a cart before a horse here, but uh, some of the things have been brought up about the fee for launching a boat don't make any sense to me. We're not paying a fee, I guess, to launch a boat from the boat ramp. We're paying a fee to park. Now, if I was a uh, fisherman, which I am, but I don't launch from there, if I had any intelligence whatsoever, I would never park my boat on that boat ramp. I would do like the gentleman said and launch my boat and flee the scene and park it somewhere else, right? So now I'm the guy that's transporting these weeds all over the pond, chopping them up into little pieces, week after week after week, and not taking any responsibility for the damage that I'm causing to the pond, which created this, is trying to create this district. So how do we change that? I don't have an answer to that question. But that is kind of like the root of the problem. I'm 78 years old. I've swam on this pond since I was able to swim, right? So I'm going to say that was 70 years. <clears throat> Until that boat ramp came in, I never encountered a weed. And my, to support the thing about drowning, my son, who was six foot three and very, very physically active, and his son swam across the bay over here one night and almost got in big trouble because they got caught in invasive weeds just off of the small beach at Heaven Heights. So the weeds are everywhere and the weeds are dangerous. So I think it's absolutely necessary that first off, we try to attack the problem of charging people for launching boats, which we're not doing now, right? They got a free ride to destroy our pond, and we can't do anything about it based on what we were told a few minutes ago. Uh, so that's just a comment. I guess it's not really a question. Could I address? Hold on. Let me get to his, his next part. The other, the other question I have, have any of the groups, the people involved in this, been involved with 
a group that has successfully eradicated weeds from a pond anywhere? So that, that uh, yes or no answer. Yes. Okay. Where? We have, uh, we have a representative from Solitude Lake Management here that would be happy to address that. Okay. Well, I think we need to know a little bit about that. How long might it take? Uh, Etc. Uh, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll address that. Um, do you want to address that yeah, now? Sure. Sure. This is Joe Honorado from Solitude Lake Management. Thanks, Jay. So, uh, again, um, I'm Joe Honorado, Solitude Lake Management. So, uh, we are a lake management company, so we do everything from weed surveys, water quality, through the implementation of management. We manage uh, roughly 10,000 water bodies nationwide, um, about 750 here in New England, and we have been doing that for roughly 30 years. Uh, we got bought out, so a different name change, but in one way or another, 30 years or so uh, in the industry. You know, the challenge here, admittedly, is you know how long will it take and things like that. There is no set answer. I think the thing to understand here is there really isn't a ton of data on Long Pond. So we do manage a very small cove already on Long Pond, that Horseshoe Cove up on Parkhurst. Um, so we know some of the weeds out there. So there's invasive fanwort, invasive uh, variable water milfoil. So, um, and those are some of what you saw in Jay's pictures there. So in a general sense, we can kind of say, well, we know those weeds are out there, but we don't know the extent, the distribution, um, you know, water quality. There really isn't a ton of data, if any, available currently. So, you know, I've been in correspondence with Jay for probably three, four years now in one way or another. You know, and our play is really to make educated decisions. And I think that's the thing to understand here. So unfortunately, there is no set answer right now, but um, we know that the first step will be a vegetation survey, likely taking some water quality, really so that this group or whatever that governing entity ends up being can make educated decisions to manage the water body. You know, I, I hesitate to use the word eradication, unfortunately. You know, these invasive weeds really do require some level of annual management. There are strategies that can provide systemic level control, so multi-year nuisance level control. Um, you know, lots of times management tends to fall within budgets, so there are, you know, budget constraints in many cases. So, you know, what the actual plan is right now is, is still to be determined, I would say. I think we know the first step is to collect an adequate amount of data to make educated decisions moving forward. Um, and then we can address that there. But usually it's an integrated approach. It could be manual techniques, mechanical techniques, herbicides. You know, there just isn't a ton of data to answer that question. But there's, you know, 10,000 lakes out there that have been managed by us and many more by other companies throughout the U.S. that have case study after case study after case study. There's thousands out there that show that these weeds can be managed with great success. And I think... Um, just as a small snippet on Long Pond specifically, we've had great success up in Parkhurst, that little horseshoe cove, uh, over the last several years managing fanwort milfoil. Um, so I guess that's that's a case study right there on Long Pond. I don't know if that answers the question, but it's probably about as specific as we can get, I think, with the data at hand. Okay, and I have been up in that, in that cove, and it, it is much better than it was uh, several years ago, for sure. But we're talking about Freetown, and we're talking about people in Freetown being assessed a small amount of money, but it's also a significant amount of money. Uh, $100 or $200 is that amount of money in, in the bottom line, and it's most probably going to go up. No. So how long would it take before we got past the study phase, which we're not even into yet, I guess, uh, and I realize you're heavily involved in, in this for a long time. But what I refer to as pork barrel cove and the cove in front of uh, the beach, the Freetown Beach, and in front of uh, the beach out here in front of Heaven Heights. Uh, how long would it take before those weeds are trying to be treated and eliminated? I, I guess that's probably going to be uh, more so up to up to Jay and those guys. I mean, I guess in my opinion, 
you know, the first year would be heavily focused on surveys. I think it's, again, you know, I'm not the decision maker here. We just offer services. So, you know, in my opinion, I would prefer that first year be heavily focused on surveys uh, to some extent. Um, but management wise, things can happen very quickly. So whether it be herbicide control or mechanical control, you can see, you know, results once that's enacted, you can see results, you know, virtually immediately. So it's not like it takes, you know, if we're, if we're say managing a beach area, whether it be through mechanical control or let's say a cove area through mechanical control or herbicides, it's not like if that program is implemented in say 2021, you're not going to see results till 2024. You'll see results that same season. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't leave a lot to guessing. It's, it's noticeable. And like you set up in Parkhurst, you know, once it was managed virtually immediately, they experienced um, you know, great results, great success, and they've kept that program going for several years, and it just shows that it, it is working. It's something that they, you know, pay for themselves to manage, but it has been effective. I don't know if that answers the question, but... Yeah, I guess it starts to. Well, is there a way, can anybody here in the know, come up with a plan to tax, assess a fee or whatever, the boat owners that come here week after week after week that don't live on Long Pond, don't even live in Lakeville or Freetown, and transport this stuff all over the pond. I'm, I'm really happy you brought that up because the answer is a little bit fun for me. Um, maybe lighten things up a little bit. So uh, I won a uh, Super Bowl bet a couple of weeks ago, and uh, a buddy of mine had to take me for a round of golf and the Monday following the Super Bowl was a beautiful day. The only golf course that was open was uh, Lakeville, uh, Lakeville Country Club. So we went to Lakeville Country Club. And there are ponds, if you're familiar with Lakeville Country Club, there are ponds on, uh, on the golf course, bodies of water. They don't have any boats. They don't have any docks. And for some reason, these ponds attract all of my golf balls. <laughs> so when I was walking up to the edge of the water, I looked in the water, and there was my golf ball, and next to it was variable milfoil. And then I realized that the entire pond was completely covered in milfoil, just like the weeds that we have in our pond, only much, much worse. The entire pond is covered. There are no boats. There are no docks. People don't even swim in there. Yet, it's covered in mail for it. So it's important to understand that boats are not what is introducing the milfoil into the bodies of water. Yes, they do help spread because every time those propellers go through those, those uh, weed infested areas, every piece becomes a new plant that's broken out by a propeller. So my frustration is the same as yours. Um, but it's important to understand that it's boaters coming in and out of Long Pond are not the number one contributor to the weed infestation. Um, it has been told to me that uh, when treatment starts, that there will be signs posted in the areas where the treatment is being done, and those signs will say, uh, you know, weed treatment in progress, no boating. So as to cut down uh, the traffic through those weeded areas while they're being treated. I mean, it's also important to understand that uh, that the treatment is, is relatively quick. If you're if you're going in with an eco harvester um, or or what's the rate? A hydro raking. As soon as you go through with the hydro rake, the weeds are gone. They're not there. Uh, so I guess in, in, in short, what I'm trying to say is that the boaters are not responsible for the introduction um, of, of, of the weed species. Um, they do contribute. Now, I've also been speaking with uh, Tom Flannery uh, from the state. He's with the, uh, he's DCR. He's DCR. And he's told me that uh, DCR would be more than happy 
to supply the state boat ramp with a wash plant. In a wash plant, what that means is that when before a boat comes into Long Pond, a boat ramp monitor will inspect the boat and the trailer, which is really where, where the weeds are, are coming from, and uh, will wash down the boat before it goes in, and they'll also wash down the boat as it leaves, because they could be taking weeds from our pond and deposit, depositing them in someone else's pond. So that's the plan. The plan would be to work with the selectmen of Freetown and with the state of Massachusetts so that we can have boat ramp monitors that will inspect boats and clean boats prior to entry and when they leave. As far as charging boat owners, it's, it's, it's in the Massachusetts general law that that can't happen. Uh, you can only charge to park at the boat ramp. Um, it's, it's one of my frustrations. I was one of those guys that said, hey, look, at, you know, we, we need to have control. But that was before I realized that the number one source of um, the weed introduction is from geese and, and ducks and fowl. Okay, well, I guess it definitely answered my question. <laughs> Yeah. You said maybe, maybe yeah. not. I mean, I so, can, I can probably answer it too. Yeah. Hold, hold on, hold on. So, do, do you have any further questions? Uh, no, you shut me down pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do. Sir. Jeff Tamara, Hemlock Point. Uh, let me quickly comment on washing the trailers down. And, declining, so to speak, in and out of whatever the proposal that was just mentioned by the gentleman in front of you. Um, that's fine. Water recovery, you wash it down, it goes back in the pond, it grows again. So it, it's not an easy fix. Anybody can hose down a trailer, but you have to recuperate all that water and all that potential weed that is being now washed off or washed in. So expensive. Um, however, I digress. I've been on the pond maybe since 54. Prior to the state taking over, was the water brown? Sure. Puddle on the pond. Loaded with pine and block all the way around. That's the color of the water. I'm sorry. It's there. It's always been the orange, always been the brown. Grew up with it. We all survived. Another gentleman mentioned Evil Fisher. Evil, if anybody does not know him in Freetown, and most of us older people do, I remember him. He was known for his cranberry box and dowsing abilities and put a well here and don't dig deep because you won't hit water, you'll hit brackish and blah, blah, blah. Evil owned the whole south end of the pond at one point in time. Donated that to Cathedral Camp. Great guy. Where I'm living, all that was all his. He split it up into lots or whatever. My dad bought in the 50s. The state came in, I'll say probably 1972, 75, said, you know what? were coming in and taking a long pond. It's a great pond. And when I say take, they took. Eminent domain, Nemo was offered money for his land at the boat ramp. No, no, no. Sorry, Mr. Fisher, it's ours. His $2,000, have a good life. Took it over. The state of Massachusetts owns that pond. This is their problem. Not that it's not mine, not that I don't want to help. But it's their pawn, all the funding, all these speeches, all this stuff that you guys put together for a district should be, if they haven't been already, addressed to the state, whether it be reps, state senators, whatever. And this is not the only pawn that they have in the state. There are seven great pawns or nine great pawns, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and maybe they own them, maybe they're on all of them. Since the state has been there, the boat ramp is beautiful. You can drive anything you want down there and never bury a truck. There's a stop, or there used to be a stop, so you can't get confused. Any dummy can back a boat down there, put it in, and have a nice day. Whether they're from Fall River, <laughs> New Hampshire, Maine, California, they're going to use Long Pond for a $5 parking fee. Can't Welcome aboard, you know. Come use my pond. Prior to that, we had fishermen. We had Captain Bubbs. was the only boat ramp available. I think there was a $5 fee or $10 fee way back in the day. If you have your own private... They fine, put your boat in, take it out. Those are still around the pond. I see holes built all the time with a ramp that garage that you drive through, drive in and launch your boat and come back out again. 
It's not the way we're going to be headed. The state's going to keep this forever, so we have to deal with it. Since the state has been there, I now have to have a uh, flood insurance to the tune of $2,000 a year with a $10,000 deductible. Thank you, state of Massachusetts. When I put a dock in, I have to go to the DEP because now, as soon as you go into the water, now the state owns the water or the land that my dock is going to set on. As soon as you put stuff on the ground on the bottom of Long Pond, you have to have it titled and set up, whether it be, whether it be a dock, whether it be a um, boat lift, anything that's going to touch the bottom of the pond. And legally, I don't even think you're supposed to have it attached to your property. I think it has to be inches away because it's theirs and they charge you a fee. Thanks again, State of Massachusetts. Here we are again. Now I'm going to say thank you, Town of Freetown, Town of Lakeville, because you're going to take some more money out of my pocket. No, no, it's not going to happen. Just some quick comments on a homeowner that's been there for quite a few years, and uh, hopefully my kids will enjoy it. And you know what? They're going to swim in brown water like I did. Thank you. If I could ask the two folks behind you haven't spoken yet at all, would you mind if they went first? Hi everybody, uh, my name is Ryan Sylvia, I live on Bluefield Street, Freetown. I um, just want to say first, I'm, I'm not against this. Um, I'm actually really pro-environment, but I do have, I think, some important questions. Um, like, I, this is really like a problem that we can't ignore. Uh, it's here. The, the brown water is the brown water, but the, the plants aren't from the pond, right? Um, and I think we need to stay focused on the proposal only and only what we can control. We, we can't control what the state is doing. Uh, they, they're going to win. Uh, but we can do something about this collectively, um, which is a, a good first step. And if nobody takes a, a step, then we're not going to get anywhere ever. Uh, and I, I might not be as old, and I haven't seen this pond as long as some of the other people have talked today. Um, but I have been swimming in this pond since I was a baby. Um, my grandparents have lived on the lake, um, you know, as long as I've been alive. And it's, it's gotten worse, it's gotten worse, it's gotten worse. Uh, to the point where, you know, you really can't just swim across the, the, any part of the pond anymore without having a real problem. Um, uh, the questions I have, I guess, are, have any other companies bid on this? Um, because in, in my experience, whenever uh, anything goes, any, any money is spent through the government, you usually need to get three bids. My, my wife is a C, uh, CPA, and uh, that's a big part of the process whenever any government money is spent. And so far, I've only heard about one company. So uh, if we're going to be spending money on this, are we going to get the most bang for our buck? That'd be a question for anybody who can answer it, I guess, the company or the representative here. So no, 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 it's just one company we've talked to so far. Are they guaranteed the job? Is so it has been clarified to me by town council that this is it's, it's a hard nut to crack. It's the district that's going to spend the money. They may not be subject to the same bidding requirements the town is. Um, do you know if you are subject to the same bidding requirements the town? Maybe the legal consultant can answer that. Anybody at all? I think what the current version of the legislation says is that Mike? that process will be governed. I think what the current version of the legislation, the proposed legislation, says is that process will be governed by the bylaws. So it could be written into the bylaws that you get competitive bidding. So, for example. The first year, as the proposed contractor pointed out, they do a survey, and they give an estimate, and then the governing body, the, the committee, could go out and get competitive bids. It's a, it's a valid point. Absolutely. Sure. Now, I guess that leads into my second question. Um, what? Hold on. I'm just going to put, because you, you haven't, do you have more than one bid currently? Because that was actually his original question. No bids. There are no bids yet. Okay. Okay. So, I, again, like someone else mentioned the price and how much it's going to cost people there isn't a bid, then how do we know what these numbers are? And like I said, I am for this. I'd like to vote for it, but... Uh, so just like if we were building a boat or an infrastructure project, we had to put a budget together, so we got estimates. And one of the experts in our region is this company. Are there any other companies? There, there are companies nationwide, okay. yes. yes. Um, so some people have had some problems with some of the wording in this, in this act. 
Uh, if we vote yes today, um, when could those things be changed? Because I feel like if you're going to vote yes, you make the changes up front. You don't hope that they get changed later. Um, I, like I said, I am for this, but I also don't want to vote for something that could spiral. I believe that we would do the edits right away before we went to the second municipality. And we'd have an opportunity to do further edits if it was voted on favorably and before it went to the state legislature. And the state legislature has an opportunity to make further edits. So if we approve this today, um, it would be as it's written, and then we would have to... No, both towns would have to approve the same version. It'll be a single version. Okay. So yes, you have an opportunity to edit. Okay. I'm just going to interrupt for a second. Our town attorney would like to respond to, to part of this discussion. Yeah, thank you. I, a couple of comments. Yeah, to get back to the, the, the cost side, keep in mind that the, the town of Freetown is not the one that's going to be spending the money. I think, I think the moderator already clarified that. In terms of legislation, we have a draft piece of legislation. It hasn't been, we haven't been told how the final draft is going to be presented. You're being asked tonight to vote on a petition to send legislation to the, to, uh, the, the general court, the state legislature. We don't, we don't have a final version of the legislature. You're hearing that uh, change will be made before it winds up with Lakeville. We don't know what Lakeville is going to be discussing at that point. And I haven't heard a, prison, uh, a, a suggestion that the, uh, the opponent is going to come back to Freetown with a final version. So my concern is when, the, when these revisions are made, is Freetown going to be made aware of these revisions? Because right now, we only have a draft. We don't have a final document. We're being told that revisions are going to be made. We're being told that uh, there's going that you'll you'll be listening to the voters and making changes. And and your, your suggestion was just that uh, it, it, the final version will be approved by the towns. How is that going to happen? You have I think to that's pass the bill before you know what's going to happen. that before. No, I think that's spelled out in the legislation that there. Where? <coughs> just, just one second. As, just as a, a clarification, does everybody have a copy of the legislation that was on the table out in the hallway? Was there anybody that didn't get one? Okay, so they did run out. So, if I may, Mike, if, if, if I may, I, I'm here reference to yeah. Section 12. Section 12 talks about actions taken by special needs of the district. Your, your, your suggestion that the legislation is going to essentially discuss correcting itself. Uh, the concern that's being raised is that town meeting is being asked to vote to authorize the legislation to go forward. The legislation has to be in a final form for the for the, selectment, for the, uh, the town to understand what it's voting on. By pointing to section 12, which talks about corrections being made by the district, that's not coming before town meeting. That's the district. So there's nothing in the in the legislation that talks about a final version of legislation. I'll be kind of backwards because at that point we approve legislation that talks about correcting itself. The concern that, that's being raised is, and, and it's, it's pointed out by comments that uh, you council have made and, and, and members of your committee have made, that this is not a, this is not a final document. Change is going to be made before you get to Lakeville, raising the concern that Lakeville is going to be seeing something different that Freetown is seeing. So this, at this point, the voters here don't know don't know what what you are proposing. No, and it's a point well taken. So we are certainly willing to present the final version before it's submitted to the state legislature. It, that There's nothing wrong with that process. I mean, could we add something in today which like requires a, like a final approval after Lakeville uh, sees it? My, I thought when we were coming here today, we were voting, uh, the citizens were being asked to vote on the language in the warrant. And I never expected, and I don't believe my group expects that you're approving a final version of the legislation. I don't know how that would be physically possible, Council, because we have to go to another municipality. So we're, my understanding of the process, and I'll defer to Town Council, is we're asking you to approve the concept that's laid out in the warrant, the single paragraph number two. Okay, and we, 
Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't trying to cut you off. My, the concern, though, is that what the Warren article asks is to see if the town will vote to put forth legislation. The, the suggestion of this is that, that if, this, if this body votes in favor, the legislation would then be put forth. There's nothing in this Warren article that specifies that the legislation in its final form will come back to town meeting. Now, a motion can be made. That would that would that would authorize that would require that before any legislation goes forward to the legislature, that it be resubmitted to the town and taken up at a, at a future town meeting. So that that is a process that can be put in place. So if there's a concern that this is a draft and you and you want to revise it, the concern I, I think that's being expressed is as the warrant is is presented to today, the voters are being asked to authorize you to bring this forward to the legislature. And if it's going to be revised, and if ultimately both Freetown and Lakeville are going to be considering a piece of legislation, it does make sense that the final version be brought back to town meeting and uh, that, that an opportunity be given for, for a full review of the legislation so that uh, we all know that Freetown and Lakeville are considering the same document and that the issues that are being raised tonight by voters are, is taken into consideration in the final version of the legislation. So if I could ask a procedural question, would that specification to require the final version to come back to town meeting would that be a standalone motion or would that have to be part of a motion to adopt I mean, it, it, could, it could actually be done in a in number of different ways depending on what what folks are comfortable with it could be a motion to uh, you know a, a, approve the article contingent upon it, the the uh, proponents coming back to town meeting with a final version of legislation legislation or it could be a standalone motion simply saying that uh, you know, move that the uh, that the legislation uh, consideration le legislation be tabled until such time as uh, to a time certain when the, when the final legislation can be brought before the town meeting so it can be done a couple of different ways would be hold on a second you wait till you get to the microphone um, May, may I um, address the gentleman here uh, with regard to that question? Yes, you can respond. Uh, so is there a question specifically on the legislation that you're looking at right now? Um, there had just been, there have been other constituents in Freetown that had expressed um, their frustration with some of, of the, uh, the wording in the document. And I just want to make sure that uh, a, a full discussion is had and that certain things like you know proper bidding and vetting of companies is done because I haven't really seen or heard anything about those sorts of things. Um, if it like like I said, I'm for this, I, you know, but I want to make sure that we're getting um, the full picture. And honestly, if if there was a motion to make sure that this came back after Lakeville before it went to the state, you'd, you'd have my vote today. Um, Okay, well, but I, I just don't think that it's as clear as I would need it to be to, to vote yes as is. Um, okay, then I think what we would do is uh, I think what we would do is probably recommend that we have a workshop of the proprietors um, specifically uh, with Lakeville and Freetown after we go to Freetown. Um, so if we were to Let me defer that to Karen. Okay, so I, what I would suggest is that if we uh, do take a vote to put forth this legislation subject to um, having a workshop uh, immediately after Lakeville's vote, and that would be a meeting of the proprietors. It's also important to understand that this legislation, this district rather, is a district that's run by the proprietors. It's not run by the town. So you as a proprietor are voting for a committee. That committee will run the district, but that committee won't do anything without your vote. So it's important to understand that this district is a district of the proprietors. It is run by the people that are that are in the district. Yeah, I do understand that. It was just, you know, issues like, you know, if you want more specifics, I suppose I can give them, like, um, it, the committee has the ability to expand the district. Uh, the boat ramp is there. Everybody has access to the pond. Does it become the entire town? Your salaries aren't, uh, you know, talked about in the document. Um, 
I know that, uh, like in the town of Dartmouth, uh, the, the Board of Selectmen worked for free for many years during the economic crisis. Uh, what's your salary? Is it a thousand dollar stipend, or are we talking eighty thousand dollar salary? I know that's probably an extreme number, but I want numbers. No, it, that's very good. And so the committee, uh, the district, at its first annual and its first meeting, will vote on the budget. So again, you are in total control. The district actually votes on on the budget and the direction of the district. Yeah. Again, my. But that's the problem. We're just, you know, we're voting yes, we're creating the district, and then the district um, itself makes those decisions. Um, I, I just think that we're we're putting something ahead of something else that needs to be addressed. That I'm, I don't want to take up everybody's time here. I'm sure everybody has other things to do, but, you know. You've raised several valid points, so thank you for that. But I think everyone needs to understand how we put the legislation together, how we put the budget together, the, bot, the draft bylaws. We look to other districts because they are not uncommon in the Commonwealth. We look to other lake districts. Um, there are watershed uh, organizations. That, oh, so, so we have templates. We don't have all the details worked out. We're trying to custom tailor it to these two communities. This input is helpful. So we, yes, we have a budget. It's a draft budget. Could it be tweaked? Yes, it could. We're, we want to help the community, help the municipalities do a better job. We don't want to put up barriers. We don't want to do anything in secret. It's all going to be transparent and in the open. So if you want to give us your comments uh, or find me and, and make sure that I know what your comments are, I'd love to hear them because you're actually helping us. But we went to other organizations, some of them have been operating for 10 years or more, and we looked at those templates, and then we custom tailored them to the needs of these two communities. We didn't invent this, okay? It's, it's proposed by MassDEP and the Department of, of uh, Resources and, and other state agencies, because simply speaking, the municipalities in the state couldn't get it done, so they turned it back to us here in the community. So that's why it's this kind of a process. It's a dem democratic process. So thank you. Uh, town Council is asked to, to make a statement again. Yeah, just, just briefly to, to follow up, I think it's important to recognize that I think Council has, has addressed this, that the district is going to essentially be a, a separate government unto itself. So the district will be voting on its own budget. Issues of things like salary, You every, every year we come and we vote on the salaries for everyone from the moderator through his uh, past salary, which is why he's here today, because he gets paid so much. Uh, but, uh, uh, so you, you, have, you have control. News to me. <laughs> you, have, you have control over the, the, the town's budget. The district will have control over its budget. The district will determine the salaries of its employees. The district will, will determine the, the salaries of uh, committee members. So we're not, today we're not here discussing that issue, because that's an issue of governance what, what, you're, what you're voting on is, is is moving forward to create that form of governance. And so the concerns raise things like mm -hmm. annexing property or uh, the role of, uh, and keep in mind, there is a uniqueness here because you've got two towns. You've got two separate towns. Most districts are found within a single town. Um, you've got two <coughs> towns, you've got two counties. You've got references to the selectmen calling a meeting, but it's not, it's, it, you know, lack of clarity as to how that's going to be accomplished. We have two boards of selectmen. You have issues with assessment of taxes, the involvement of, or, or some involvement of uh, the town's board, each town's board of assessors, things like that. Those are things that actually need to be worked out because that's, those are issues that, that affect the entire town. The issue of, of, of budgets and salaries and bidding, things like that, that's going to be uh, established within the district. And the district, in terms of establishing its bylaws, the bylaws will be established not by the committee, but by the voters of the district through a district meeting process, much like town meeting establishes the bylaws for the town itself. So I think, you know, we just be careful how far we're taking this. If the, if, 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 the, if the voters at this meeting feel comfortable with establishing a district, you have to recognize that you're allowing the district to govern itself which would include adopting bylaws, establishing uh, uh, budget, establishing salaries. That would be the role of the district, not of Freetown Town Meeting, not of Lakeville Town Meeting. 
the, the concern is the, the issue that should be of, of primary concern is the overarching issue of whether you're comfortable establishing a separate s a system of governance that just addresses the, uh, uh, the Lake District and, uh, and, and uh, is across uh, uh, two different towns. I just want to give that bit of clarification and maybe try to help frame the issues a little bit for you. I'm just going to touch on one thing that was said before, too, about making amendments. Because um, we do amend articles at town meeting from time to time. This article was submitted as a petition. Petitions have to be voted on in the form they were submitted. If there was a technical problem, if there was a comma missing, a word missing, that would be one thing. Um, as far as the article as it's printed in the ward, no, there can't be substantial amendments made to that article. As far as the legislation, that was not submitted as part of the petition, so it's not for the room here today to make significant amendments to it. It's to, as you're doing now, to voice the concerns you have and ask them to go back and work on it if that's what you choose. So I, I just wanted to clarify that, like, nobody should make a motion to try to change something in the legislation because you can't do that today. Um, Mike, go ahead. Hi, Mike. Oh, I'm Mike Mata from the Sonnet. I am um, the chairman of the Board of Assessors, and so I have some questions as an assessor, and I also have some questions personally as a voter. So let me start out. Personally, um, the last speaker actually took out a few of the questions that I had. My biggest concern today as a voter, and not as assessor, as assessor, is that we are being presented with what appears to be incomplete information, but we're being asked to vote on it. And I would prefer that we have, uh, or would have had a discussion like this prior to this meeting so that we could all have some input on it and know more about it. But as a, as a voter today, I would rather that we um, take whatever procedural steps we need to to uh, table this or, or withdraw it or however so that the committee can come back to us with a complete document that we'll, um, we can then vote on knowing that it is in its complete form as it's going to be submitted to the legislature. Um, so now I have, a, I have some questions as, as an assessor and I'm going to reference this document that, that was uh, passed out today, the actual um, act. In section four um, of these acts, it says that the Board of Assessors shall furnish the selectmen with a then current listing of all proprietors in the district. <laughs> section nine also requires that the assessors prepare and forward to the committee a true and complete alphabetic listing with addresses of the proprietors. So I just need to point out that in section one of this um, document, the proprietors are defined as anyone directly abutting, anyone having deeded access, properties that lie within an association, properties that have an easement, or properties that are abutting a tributary to Long Pond. So what this legislation, as I read it, is requiring of the assessors is that we somehow determine all of the people that have deeded access right, all of the abutters of tributaries to Long Pond, and I can tell you that um, th it appears that this requires us to do that the first time within 180 days. Um, we currently are at a low staffing level in the assessor's office. I can't imagine that we could do all our research and have that done within that uh, amount of time. Uh, in particular, having to make a list of all the people with deeded rights, I've been trying to figure out a way that we could do that without looking at virtually every deed to see whether they have deeded rights or not. Um, it seems like this is going to be quite an undertaking for the assessor's office, and I'm not sure how we'd be able to manage that at this point. And I'm not sure if that's a question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you get a little high pitched at the end of it, it might have sounded like yeah, that. I suppose I could put a question mark at the end of it and, and maybe actually present it as a question. Has the committee done the necessary research to determine all of the people who would be, in fact, proprietors? Uh, Jay. Yes, actually, we, we have. Uh, and we would actually supply that list to the assessor's office. Um, so, yeah, that's the answer. Yes, we have done that research, and we would actually supply, and that's how we came up with the number of uh, approximately 1,500. Okay, so I'm curious to know, how, how was it that you determined who has deeded access anywhere? It doesn't specify even deeded access in Freetown or Lakeville. So how did, how did you determine that? Well, it's, it's pretty simple because if, if, if there's a neighborhood that has 
a benefit to Long Pond, which means if they have a boat ramp, or if they have a beach, the ability or the ability to access the water, then that entire neighborhood would be part of the district. I'm specifically asking about how did you determine who has a deeded right to access, since a deed can be sold to anyone. So literally anyone yes. in the world could hold a deed to access this pond. So how did you locate those people? Because you can look up the deed on, uh, online and you can read whether they have deeded access. That's exactly my point. You'd have to read every single deed to see whether or not they have access. And so I guess my question then is, well, you actually have you looked at every deed? Every neighborhood that has a benefit to Long Pond would be a neighborhood that would be included in the district. Okay, well, we could we could debate this for a while. My understanding of state I'm law is- I'm not debating with you. I'm just telling you that that's how you would I'll, I'll uh, determine any property, any neighborhood that has uh, a benefit to Long Pond would be uh, part of the district. Okay, um, as an assessor for quite a number of years, um, we have to follow state law and, and a list that is provided to us is something that we have to verify in any case, but again, I'm not sure how how we could determine whether somebody has a right unless we were to review every deed. But I'm just gonna move on from that one um, to a section, uh, Section two, persons or entities that jointly own one or more separately assessed parcels within the district shall collectively constitute a proprietor. Um, not an attorney, but the way I read that is anyone that has more than one property would be one proprietor, but yet, uh, and so presumably would have one vote, but yet a person who has multiple properties would in fact be taxed multiple times and yet only have one vote. So that's something that's unclear to me that I, I'd like to have clarified at some point. Um, sections uh, two and three reference anyone who has a budding property, uh, a budding a, a tributary, sorry, anyone who has property that's a budding a tributary to Long Pond. It seems to me that um, that is going to extend to existence quite beyond. Um, anybody who's directly abutting the pond that would include probably people who are not aware that they're in fact abutters to a tributary and who may in fact be one of the people who didn't come today thinking that they don't uh, have any input to this. Um, section um, 3B, 3E and on uh, refers to various appropriations for assessment as, as someone else has pointed out today um, we don't have a copy of the budget we don't know exactly what the assessments would be i happen to be one of the people that would be determining the assessment so i would like to see more detail about the budgets and what these numbers are before um, before i was voting on it um, as to the estimates can you tell me what the total assessment is of all the properties that you had uh, used when you did your estimate no. Well, without a total value of all the uh, assessments, you can't possibly estimate, as you did on one of the slides, how much each property is going to be. Um, it, it simply can't be done if you don't have the total. So that's interesting. It's um, an estimate. So in that case, um, the 1,500 homes is an estimate. The 250,000 a year is an estimate of the budget. The amounts that you show as uh, dollar amounts that people are going to pay are also estimates. Um, let's move on. If you, could you put up that slide again for um, that you have for Senator Rogers? Oh, this is, is a personal that, question. Is that the letter, the yeah. slide of the letter? Yes. Is it, are you able to put that back in? Oh. Now, there was a reference made in your closing that Senator Rogers recommends that we create a Lake District. I'm assuming that you're referring uh, to the Just letter. pause one second until I get sure. the letter back up. If you could just point out to me where in that letter he's recommending that you create a lake district, I didn't notice that. Uh, okay, so I had several conversations with Senator Rogers. I'm sorry, the question is, could you point out in the letter where he recommends that? 
Yes, I guess what I was referring to is I respectfully request that you give full consideration to this proposal. Okay, that's, um, I would suggest that that's not a recommendation that the town create a lake district. That's a recommendation that we give consideration to the proposal, which I would assume Senator Rodericks would agree with at this point. Um, we did bring up information or questions on bids and RFPs, and again, as a personal question, um, I would like to see that any money spent be done after appropriate bidding and RFPs. Um, again, just a, a personal statement, I, I have no nothing against the concept of cleaning up the pond. I think it's, a, it's an amazing resource and we absolutely should do it. My biggest concern is uh, today that there seems to be more questions remaining than answers and I would like to see all the answers and with that I am done. Thank you. Jovan Mabin Heights. Uh, we keep talking about cleaning up the pond but we have uh, federal government, state government, county government, town government. I think what we're really voting thing is do we want another level of taxing authority over us? We want another form of government that has the ability to tax us. Ronald Reagan said the scariest words in the English language was, I'm from the government, I'm here to help you. <laughs> so I, I don't have faith in that. But my question is, I belong to Heaven Heights Neighborhood Association. It says in here that any proprietor shall be, uh, an entity shall be a proprietor. Well, we have to pay as an entity because we own two wooded lots. And if we do, am I covered under them paying and not have to pay myself. Do my rights come from me owning a proprietary interest in those deeded in those lots? And if not, I give up my deeded interest. You want to opt out of your deeded rights? Will they pay me my fiduciary loss by opting out of rights to that land? So uh, just for ease, I'm going to split that question in half. The first part of the question was, if the Heaven Heights Association has to pay the uh, district assessment and somebody belongs to the Heaven Heights Association, is that covering them or are they paying a separate? Because they have the deed to those lots. The Heaven Heights entity. Association would not be paying into the district. The individual proprietors would be. But it says that the entity will be paying in Section 2. For the purposes of this act, proprietors shall include natural persons and other entities empowered to own real estate in the Commonwealth. The Neighborhood Association is empowered to own. Heaven Heights does not own property. We pay property tax. Heaven Heights. I, I do. Heaven Heights, at least in this town, I think does they, own a beach. They do. They have, I'm sorry. I, I, I stand corrected. They have a, a, a beach. But they're and two wooded lots. They're, they're not profit and they're not subject to uh, payment. That's, That's not clear. I'm hearing a lot of estimates, a lot of not finalized bills, a lot of estimates on salaries, estimates of, there's a lot of guesswork in it. It's like Nancy Pelosi said, you have to vote on it before you know what's in it. And so look how that worked out for us. I don't want another level of government taxing me right. who's, who doesn't even have questions, the most basic answers. The, the most basic questions you have. The second part of your original question, if you sign away the deed of access to Long Pond, is the district going to compensate you? Is that? Yeah, because they're going to say, I can't go down to, the, to my deeded rights to that picnic land. Sorry, I don't dip one toe in the water, but now I can't go and step on my own land that I have deeded rights to? That's uh, between me and the government, not between me and them. Will they be able to confiscate land too? A fiduciary interest in the land. Yes. But uh, to, 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 this tells me that there's a lot of not final answers involved there. Okay, so as far as the opt-out, uh, as far as the opt-out mechanism goes, uh, there's several lake districts in Massachusetts. And every <coughs> one about this one. I'm trying to answer your question, sir. And every lake district uh, treats their opt-out in a different way. Some opt-out features uh, require a deed restriction. So if you opt out of the district and you have deeded access to that body of water, then that district would have you sign a deed restriction stating that you no longer have deeded access to the water. I don't believe that's the direction that this district should go. Some districts say, all right, well, if you have a financial hardship, then 
you are uh, you do not have to pay now, but your fee will accrue on your tax bill, and then when you sell your property, you can pay for it then. Just like a sewer betterment charge. So the opt-out feature will be voted on by the district and how it, it should proceed. Right now, there's there's wording in the legislation that says that we have to have that opt-out feature, but that the district will vote on how that should work. It sounds like there's just a lot of guessing and a lot of, you're asking us to vote on something, and then you're going to go put before the legislation something no, completely, not before the legislation. completely different than what we're voting on today. We're asking you to vote on proposed legislation, the proposed legislation not to create a district, and then after the state says, yes, it's okay, you can go ahead and create that district, then the proprietors meet at its first annual meeting, and the proprietors vote on all of these questions. The town doesn't vote on it. The town doesn't run the district. The people of the district run the district. So the people of the district vote on the direction and the budget. Initial question. Then the board, by majority, votes on after that. No, the district will vote at an annual meeting every year. Specifically says it in the legislation. So the district, the people of the district meet annually and vote on the direction and the budget. Everyone here can vote however they want to, but I personally believe we don't need another form of government that's unanswerable to me. Do you have any other ideas? Hold, hold on. Matt, yes, I do. Yes, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. That, that can't, if, if you're going to have a question, you've got to come up to the microphone. We can't have that. Because a lot of the premises that they're based on, I don't believe in when they're saying that. The microscopic seeds or bits of millfoil by waterfowl are responsible for creating this problem, but not bilge tanks, not water that's contained in water-cooled engines. That doesn't even make sense. How, well, how could that not happen in a boat? I agree village? with you. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I agree with you. My wife and I were sitting in front of that boat ramp this this fall, and we watched boats come in, uh, ocean boats, pull into the water run their boat for 45 minutes, wash out their bilge, and then drive away. The only thing they were doing was using a long pond as a boat wash. And it doesn't address and, private boat ramps. Okay. And, and so I 100% agree with you. Uh, I, and I didn't say that boats do not introduce it. I said that they're not, the sole, they're not solely responsible for the introduction. It's also introduced by other means in water pond. So I agree with you. Right. Just to remind me, just one at a time and, and wait to be called up to do a response. Um, do you have any additional No, I'm just voting no, and I hope I can get everybody else to consider a no vote, too. No. And are we going to vote on the motion that is actually before the board, before we vote on whether to pass it, the motion to quash? Yeah, the only motion that we have right now is the original motion to defeat. That's the only motion that exists on the floor right now. Not the motion that he proposed? That is it. That wasn't. Okay, thank you. Yes. Sir. Back again. Sorry, yes. like a bad penny. It's okay. I don't like this, but you're talking about Snake River and all the people who have but Snake River, which includes the town library as a separate entity. Now the town will be paying an <coughs> access fee because it abuts the Fall Brook area, you know, going in. And including all the people on the tributaries of Snake River on both ends. This is for the Lakeville people. When you're talking about Fall Brook, it runs a great deal all the way back because there are butters in the watershed area. The town will have to pay taxes back to the district. Now I can base that on, and I'll answer your question, say, oh no, the town can't. Because the MWRA <laughs> provides water to Boston, and all the cities and municipalities, and including this town, can charge for that service because they're a separate district. The other part of it is, are they going to include New Bedford with the fees? Are they going to include at least a penny a hundred? We wouldn't be talking about fees if we charged New Bedford for the cleanup. But I much prefer that we shut down the boat ramp, that we put people on the boat ramp, 
that we put a committee, which they have in the town, to take the fees and the town on beach and take those fees and we combine it with the fees for New Bedford, we don't have a need for them. We'll be well funded, very well funded in this town to go ahead and move the cleanup with the oversight of the existing government, with the existing selectmen, with the ex existing, uh, I forget his, his title, but he oversees the board up there. We would be able to have enforcement. We would be able to have people hired to watch this. At no cost to the town payers, no cost to the people on the pond. And when you say who has access, well, when is it going to expand? Well, now we're going to include this district, we're going to include these houses. Is that within a quarter of a mile of the pond? How about the boat ramp people? Well, in essence, everybody in the town has access to the town beach. Everybody in town has access to the town boat ramp. And we're paying for everybody else. And my motion is that we vote it down. We look at ways where the town can self-fund the cleanup, and Lakeville can do the same. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just, there was one question that was asked kind of in the middle of that, was that is New Bedford subject to the assessment, the city of New Bedford? If the one question that was um, in that comment was, is the city of New Bedford subject to the assessment? Would they be a taxpayer to the district? No, they don't own property. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would say that uh, they have the, the benefit of the warranty. Oh, hold on, hold on, let him answer. And I would say that the district is the best way to address every one of your concerns. To act as a liaison. But but the the answer to the question directly was that New Bedford would not be a taxpayer. That's correct. Okay. Um, just before Paul goes, if there's anybody else that has questions or comments that wants to get in line, otherwise, um, uh, okay. So, I think I'm hearing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No, no, no. I'm not hearing you. Yet. <laughs> I'm not hearing. You. I stood up here. I stood up here for a long time, and my friend Mark Rich took half my speech. <laughs> but what I wanted to point, point out, my name is Paul Sadek, and I live on, actually, on one of the tributaries. That's what I want to talk about in addition to the fact that I hope people understand what you're doing here. Because when you create a district, you're creating another government. Okay, That government is just like a regular town. They can impose taxes. They run similar to a town. At, they're going to have a, a meeting once a year. It's, it's kind of like having, uh, if you have a condo and you're in a condo association, whatever they need, they're going to derive from increasing the condo fees. So remember this, because this is what's, what you're dealing with. Okay, the other thing, I'm, I guess there wasn't enough of these, because I went looking for the legislation, and they said they only had brought in 75, and there's 186 people here. And I guess the town didn't get this stuff until Wednesday. So anyway, this is the first time I saw it. But a couple of things <coughs> stick out. Number one is the annexation of property uh, in Section 21. To me, if, and then we talked about tributaries. Well, Long Pond spills into Whittakis, the New Bedford drinking water, Asawanset, the Taunton drinking water. Coming off of Quirticus, you got spillways. They come right across Dr. Brayley Road. They run all the way down into a Kushnet and into Lake Street. And then they continue on into the Kushnet River. So does all that property become part of the district? Because that's a spillway off Long Pond. These are things that people aren't thinking about, and when you create another form of government, like you're doing now, or what people want you to do now, they're going to argue that, hey, that's part, that was part of the, the legislation. We can tax you. The other problem I have here is Section 18. The district may, by majority vote, agree upon appropriate compensation for the officials and employees. 
God, you got people that are elected officials that work in a town of Freetown that don't get paid. And these people want to get paid. That's just another way to get money. And you got to be real careful when you make decisions like this. Anyway, my thoughts for the day. Have a good one. <laughs> So the, the folks that are was that a also yeah. what I think I'm hearing is a motion to call the vote. Is that what I'm hearing? A motion no, a motion to call the vote, if it passes, it ends all discussion and it moves on to vote on the main motion that we already have. So I, I have heard that motion in second, so I do need to take it. Dang. Hold it. I haven't called the vote yet. <laughs> it's good enthusiasm, but we're not there yet. Um, so the motion before us right now is a motion to call the question. And again, that would end all further discussion if it passes, and we would move on immediately to the motion to defeat. So the question before us right now is do we end discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. That motion did pass. There was a majority of voices to end discussion. We move now to the original motion, which is the main motion, which is a motion to defeat this proposal. Point of order. Yes, sir. If we raise our things either one way or the other, and then there's a hand count. We will have a hand count because we have non-residents in the room. We will do a hand count. Um, Right. Um, I don't really have a clear answer to the second part of the question. Can they vote both yes and no? No. All right, so that is clarified. No, you should either vote yes or no. There should not be voting in both directions. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It probably makes sense to explain. As I understand it, you go to the mic, please. Negative motion. Correct. A yes vote would be to defeat the uh, the article. A no vote would be uh, to to approve the article. So it's the reverse of what we usually are facing. So a yes vote is a no. A no vote is a yes. That's correct. Because this this was the main motion was a motion to defeat. So you are voting yes if you are against the Lake District. You are voting no if you are in favor of the Lake District. All those who are voting, all those who are voting yes to defeat opposed to the Lake District, please raise your ticket. Yes, the, the count. We are counting this one, so the counters will need to count. Yep, there you go. Chris, where are you? Oh. Now, all those who are opposed to the motion, which would mean that you are in favor of continuing to debate, raise your tickets, please.
Yes, I'm sorry. I was asked to clarify. We had a motion to call the question earlier. That question was the question to defeat, which is what we're voting on now. If it fails, then we do begin debating again because that motion to call the question has passed. We're not, we got to finish this vote first. defeat. Those in favor of defeating the proposal was 73. Those not wishing to defeat the proposal was 81. That, hold on, that does not yet mean that it has passed. It means that we have the opportunity to discuss and we need a new motion either to defeat or approve. Motion to approve. Hold, hold on. Let him finish what he's saying, and then I heard the motion to table. I make a motion to approve contingent upon we submit a final version of legislation before it goes to the legislature. Okay, hold on. Yeah, you, uh, clarify who you're submitting it to. Is it back to town meeting? Is it? Yes, okay, so that's back to town meeting. We're just checking procedurally which motion we vote on first, if it's the motion to table or the motion to, to approve it. I believe that one is the procedure for the primary motion. Okay. All right. So procedurally, what we first have to do, just hold on one second, then you come up to the microphone in one second. Procedurally, what we first have to do is vote on the motion that was made to table, which would kill it. If that fails, then we would vote on the motion to approve subject to returning to a future town meeting. And yes, ma'am, before we go on, if you just come up to the microphone and you can ask your question. All right, folks, let's listen. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. a little bit closer. Kathy Cronin, East Freetown resident. I live right on the lake. I don't fish in it, don't swim in it, don't boat in it. Just enjoy the view. I'm all in favor of cleaning up the environment. I can't make a decision today because I can't make an informed decision because I do not have enough information. I was not fortunate enough to get a copy of the proposal, so I can't make a decision. I just can't. Sure. 
So can we see that everybody gets all the information that they need? At least everyone here gets a copy of that proposal? With the two motions that are before us right now, uh, we're either defeating it today or we're going to bring it back in the future. Whether we defeat it or whatever, I still would like that information. I think as a resident of the town, hmm? I'm entitled to that information. You would, not to sound funny, you would have to ask it of the, the folks that are proposing it because it wasn't the town that proposed it. Okay. Well, um, I'm asking. Right. I'm asking that everyone here have access to that information. We are, we are getting quite a line right now. I just want to... Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. We are getting quite a line. A motion to table, which is what's before us right now, is not a debatable or discussable, discussable motion. Uh, Mrs. Cronin had her hand up before we took the motions. That's why I let her come up and ask her question. We have to get through the tabling vote before we have any further questions or discussion. Uh, clarify the effect of the tabling motion. Yes, if the motion to table passes, that has the same effect as defeating this. The, mo the meeting will adjourn, and these folks would have to petition again if they wanted to bring this forward again. If the motion to table fails, then we would move on to the other motion, which is to bring this back at a future time. If you have a question about the procedure, that I can answer. Point of order. Yes, sir. Didn't oh, we jump? Wait, we need your name first. Sorry, I'm Matt Bivens. Stand up and so we can hear you. I'm Matt Bivens. I live on Long Pond on Huron Avenue. Um, didn't we just vote the mic? to kill the procedure and vote no and move forward? So why can't we just skip the tabling and call the question? They're separate motions. The original motion was to defeat it's the, the motion thing. to. It has the same effect. If this were a longer meeting, a motion to table would allow this to be brought up later in the meeting. It has the same effect, but it's a separate motion. It has to be voted on separately. Motion that was made, we have back the motion that was made. It seems to me that a motion was made to kill this. We voted no. Correct. And then there are multiple voices saying multiple motions, and the town has said, let's vote the table one because the town has decided it heard that first. I heard two motions. One was to table, one was to pass it and bring it back. Motions have to be taken in a particular order. Tabling has precedence over approving. Okay. So I have to take the motion to table first. It's the same vote we just did. It's basically the same vote we just did. We just have to do it again. It's a, if it's a procedural question only, if it's a question about the merits that we're not addressing right now. Are there any other procedural questions? Am I able to uh, respond to her question? No. No. I, I have to follow the attorney's advice on that one. He knows better than I do. We're on a motion to table at this point. No further discussion. Okay. We have the motion before us. She didn't ask you a question. She made a request. But, that, but that's separate for the, for the motion. Okay. The motion that is before us right now is the motion to table. If you vote yes, that is basically to defeat this. If you vote no, it is to keep talking about it. So the first vote we will I'm sorry, yes sir? Point of order. Yes. When you table, that allows that motion to come back at a later time when they're better prepared. Only in this same meeting. So once we walk out of here today, it's done. So a motion to table, because this is such a small limited meeting to two items, will kill this today, and they would have to petition again. On the motion to table, again, effectively killing this today, all those in favor, please raise your ticket, and we will count the tickets.
Now those who are voting no, who are opposed to killing this right now, please raise your ticket. Oh, you're going to count the no's. I know. Okay, on the motion to table, the yeses were 51, the noes were 93, so the motion to table has failed, and we now have the other motion that's before us that we will go back to discussing, and that motion is to approve this article contingent upon it being brought back to it, the legislation being brought back to a future town meeting, um, I believe in its final form. Is that, is that correct? May 11th is the day. So the motion that is before us is to approve this subject to the legislation being brought back in a final form, and that meeting would be on Monday, May 11th at 7 o'clock at Aponiquin. Let me make sure folks understand that because we have to specify all those particular things. So this would come back to us. If this passes, this would come back to us Monday, May 11th at 7 o'clock p.m. at Aponiquin. I'm sorry? Yes, that, we would have to vote on that. Yes, we would have another vote. You would be voting on the legislation in its final form at that time. No, that is still just free time. Call for vote now. Is this a procedural question? No, it's not. It's a question on the motion. Okay, yes. Proceed. I believe it's a little bit more obvious. Okay. Bob Jones, Chrissy Lynn Stoner. Um, Bobby. My question is more why do you pick that day where we have an annual town meeting on the first Monday of June? Anyhow, yes. we also have a special town meeting that happens just before the annual town meeting. If we have either one of those, we wouldn't have to have a special a meeting right. here. We wouldn't have to pay extra for police officers, uh, other members to come. 
We're already having an annual town meeting scheduled. Why do you pick a date that's not? When we looked for dates that the schools were available, we didn't know what size crowd we were going to have. So we were thinking even if this had had more than 300 people today. Not today. I'm talking about May 11th. I know that. We looked only at dates that Aponiquit was available because we didn't know what size crowd to anticipate. And Aponiquit is not available the day of our annual town meeting. Lakeville has already booked it. So you could, if, if you don't anticipate a huge crowd here, somebody could ask that we motion uh, to do it the night of the annual town meeting. When we did that with the water line, it blew up on us. That's when we ended up continuing for 24 hours. I do recall that. So. <laughs> uh, so if we did it the night of the annual town meeting, it would be in this room. And well, if we grab the kid go to using the gymnasium next door, like we set up in, in other situations, and we had a, a double room. I'm just. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to add extra meetings. I was just wondering why we weren't using a meeting that's already scheduled. It's a fair point. I'm going to ask um, Tim, just thumbs up or thumbs down. Can we make that work here? We can try. We can try. Okay. Um. I'll make that a motion that we have on the annual town meeting. So you're motioning to amend his motion to go annual town meeting? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Second. That I can take that one. Thank you. Second. We are voting now to amend Jay's motion. This is what's going to happen. First, we're going to vote on the date. Then we're going to vote on whether or not to do it at all. That's the first. No, that's, the, that's how the motions have been made. The first motion is whether to substitute Monday, June 1st at 7 o'clock instead of Monday, May 11th at 7 o'clock. And Monday, June 1st would be here at the elementary school and not at the high school. That's the motion we have now. Carter, yes, sir. On that, we have snowbirds in Florida who have pawn access. They Hold on, right just on come up to the microphone. Hold on. We have snowbirds in Florida who cannot vote on this. I am here actually talking in their behalf that they did not want this to pass, that the June 1st, they and all the other snowbirds would be present and able to vote on something that would directly impact them and their taxes. Fair point. I would like to also, you're going to think this is strange, but I agree with you. Um, on this date, there were a lot of people that couldn't be here because this is also the uh, first day of school vacation. Mm -hmm. And so that I also know of probably more than 30 to 40 people that couldn't be here today. So I'm, I'm saying that we need uh, a large room because I'm expecting more people at the next meeting. Okay. So the motion again that's before us right now is to substitute Monday, June 1st at 7 o'clock as the date we would consider continuing. Yes, sir. Point of order, he can amend his motion to make it June 1st and we can have one vote. If he wishes to do that, yes. Jay. 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 That, Jay, that was a question to you. Would you amend your motion just to June 1st instead of May 11th? That's the annual town meeting day. Okay, I'll amend that to uh, have the the meeting at the, at the time. Of the meeting. We can't hear you. Okay. Jay has offered to amend his motion to June 1st, and Bob has withdrawn his motion, which was also for June 1st. So now we are strictly voting once, and that's on June 1st. We are no longer voting twice. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. I was trying to vote before I called the vote. I thought he had a question. All right. The motion that is before us right now is to return here to the elementary school, Monday, June 1st at 7 o'clock, to vote on the final form of this legislation. We are approving it today, subject to them bringing the legislation back to us on June 1st. That's All right, we all have to vote on this once now. All in favor, raise your tickets. I don't, I don't think we need to count, no, I don't think we need to count this. Everybody who's in favor, tickets down. Everybody who's opposed, tickets up. That motion has passed by the majority. 
Can I have a motion to adjourn? All in favor? All opposed? One person would like to stay. Everybody else, thank you for coming. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you June 1st at 7 o'clock here.